Hello and welcome back. Angie Homley Zabo here to talk with you about gluing your template to your metal. This is a relatively easy step in the metals process, but there's few very important things that you need to remember. First of all, before you even think about gluing your template to your metal, make sure that you have a great template. If your template is sloppy, your finished product's going to be even sloppier, especially if you're just learning. So take your time to really perfect that template first. Here are the things you need to remember about gluing your template to your metal. One, you need to have really clean metal, so we're going to sand it first. Two, you need to make sure that you're thinking thoughtfully about your template placement so you're not creating more scrap than is necessary and you leave as much useful uh, metal as possible. And three, you need to use the right type of glue and the right amount. I'm going to take the next few minutes to talk with you about each of those things a little bit more in depth, and then you can start this very simple step in your process. Just don't forget to sand that metal. That's what my students forget most often. Don't forget to sand that metal, my friends. Let's get rolling. For this step, you are going to need your metal, some sandpaper. I have mine on a sanding stick, but you can just use regular a sheet of sandpaper. 320, 400, or 600 will work. If you've got it, 320 is the best. You're also going to need Aileen's Tacky Glue. I'll talk a little bit more about this specifically in a little bit. And you need your templates ready to go. So again, a template should be perfectly drawn. If you can use a ruler, because there's a straight edge, use a ruler. Um, if you have a stencil to make circles, use a stencil. If you don't have a stencil for circles, find something circular and trace it. Don't try to freehand it unless you want it to be more of a rustic shape. But take your time on your template to really perfect those. The other thing you wanna make sure is that your template is inked. So this is a waterproof ink that I've outlined everything in. I have pre-marked any holes that I need to be drilled, so these are holes for like a jump ring, and I've shaded in any areas that get pierced out or cut away and removed. So I've got my templates ready to go. Make sure those templates are solid. This step is a really simple step in the process of doing metals, but there's a couple really important things in this process that will save you time and frustration down the road. One of those things is to make sure you're gluing to metal that has been prepped correctly. Another of those things is to not waste metal, so to place your templates in ways that are really intelligent. The third thing is the type of glue and how much glue to use. So let's get started. I have pre-cut my templates out, and if you look, um, I left just a little bit of paper around that edge. I didn't cut right to my um, saw line, so I just left a little bit of a rim. Not a lot. You don't want a lot of extra paper, but you want a little bit. So I've got these cut out. They are ready to go. My next step is I need to sand my metal. So to sand the metal, I'm going to use my 320, and I want to make sure that I've got clean metal to use. And I'm just going to use this piece of copper here. It's a little easier to see on the table. Um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to sand until I have clean metal. Why do you need to have clean metal? Why are we bothering sanding the metal? This seems annoying. Yeah, it might be a little annoying, but it's way less annoying than what would happen if you don't sand your metal. If you look at where I've sanded, you can see I've got clean metal here. Everywhere else there's some oxidation, there's some dirt, there's old glue, there's oils from my hands touching it, you can see my fingerprints. All of those things on that surface of the metal, the oxidation, the oil, the fingerprints, the dirt, will cause my template, once it's glued down, it'll cause it to lift up when I'm sawing. So I'll be sawing and my template's gonna do this. And eventually it'll fall off. Um, and that is really frustrating and it's really obnoxious. To avoid that, we prep our metal well by sanding thoroughly first. Now, you only need to sand as much metal as you're going to glue to. So I don't need to sand this whole piece if all I need is this much space. You want to sand until you've got clean metal all the way through. And if you sand it and then kind of tilt your metal around, you'll see where there's dirty metal poking through clean. So you keep going until that's really nice and clean. So now your metal is prepped. If you have really dirty metal or you accidentally put lotion on your hands before you started working, you could also use acetone or fingernail polish and kind of clean off the surface metal with that. That'll take any oil off. The next thing that you're going to need to do is think about where your templates are going to go on your metal. So here's all my templates. Metal's kind of expensive. We're using copper. This is probably 
$8 worth of copper that I'm looking at right now. And, um, you know, if you're spending your own money on metal, you definitely don't want to waste it. And if you're using metal that I provide for you or your teacher provides for you, you don't want to waste it either because schools have limited budgets. Um, a lot of times when students glue their stuff to the metal, I see things kind of like this. Everything has its own space, lots of spacing between things. Um, this isn't the best way to place your stuff for how much metal you're gonna use. That means this much what metal is going to get used on your piece and you're gonna have a ton of little scrap that's hard to use and we don't wanna do that. We wanna maximize our metal and we also wanna make sawing easier. So if I've got a straight edge, I'm gonna put it right on the edge of the metal because then I don't have to saw that line. That's smart, right? <laughs> If I've got multiple straight edges like this, I'll put one straight edge on the edge of the metal. I'll trim off this little white line here so it's right on my cut line. And then I'll line it up with the other piece. And now instead of having to cut two lines, I just have to cut one. Okay, so I just saved myself one cut here and one cut there. I'm gonna put pieces right next to each other so they're almost but not quite touching. I'm gonna find pieces that fit inside other pieces really nicely. And I'm just gonna take my time making sure that I'm being smart about how I arrange my um, templates on my metal for using my space to the best of my ability and not waste any metal that I don't have to waste. Now if you look at that, now look at how much more metal is left just by taking a few minutes to place these together like a little puzzle. Again, you want straight edges. If you've got any straight edges on your template and you've got straight edges on your metal, put those straight edges together. If you've got any edges on your metal that can fit together, put those together. And then you're going to put your templates as close to one another as you can get them without them actually overlapping. That's how you place your metal. You can also do things like this. Here's a template that I made on my computer. Um, everything kind of fits together, so each of these triangles is a separate piece, but I put them together in the computer, and if I put that in there, look at how I can maximize my space here, and I'm gonna use just this little square of metal, and I'm gonna get so much bang for my buck on this piece. If I turn this copper over, you can see that I already have some templates glued down. Um, here's one way I sometimes make templates. I do a lot of art that is inspired by nature. I went outside, I grabbed maple leaves off of the ground, I photographed it and photocopied it, and that's my template. Here's oak leaves that I hand drew, and if you look, everything's packed in pretty tight together. Um, on this sheet, you can see as well, I've got things packed in pretty tight together, and then I'm utilizing my corner here for this really square template. So make sure you place your pieces very thoughtfully. At this point, I've cut my templates out. I have sanded and prepped my metal, so it's really good to go, and I'm ready to start gluing things down. I figured out where I wanna put things so that they fit nicely on the piece. I'm going to be making some little acorns, so I'm gonna glue these onto this brass. I cleaned metal in this area and in these little gaps by my branch and my leaves because I feel like that's gonna allow me to maximize as much of this space as I can and maintain this big wide strip here through the middle, which is a really useful shape um, for future metals pieces. To glue my metals down, I'm gonna use, or to glue my template down, I'm gonna use Aileen's Tacky Glue. I have used lots of different types of glue with my metal work and I found this one to be the best. It holds the template down while sawing. It sticks and adheres really well to the metal. And when I'm done sawing, it's really easy to get my template off. So here's a piece of um, copper that has been sawed out. To get my template off, all I have to do is soak it in warm water for about five, 10 minutes, and it peels right off easy beans. Um, I've struggled with using things like rubber cement, um, just regular school glue, white glue, none of them hold well enough, or the alternative is you get a glue that holds too well and it's really hard to get the glue off the surface once you're done sawing. So I highly recommend using Aileen's Tacky Glue, and no, they did not pay me for this advertisement. <laughs> to glue things down, you wanna use the right amount of glue. So I tell my, my students, and they're high school kids, but you know what, 
I can still be goofy with them. We want to use baby bear amounts of glue. Um, we don't want papa bear. Papa bear is too much. Um, that's like a goopy amount of glue on things. Um, and mama bear is not enough. So I'm gonna put glue on the back. I use my fingers. It gets a little dirty, but that's okay. I wanna make sure I coat the whole back of my template with um, just a nice thin layer of that tacky glue. And then I pop it up, pick it up, and I'm gonna put it on my metal, placing it as I had planned earlier, and then I push it down. So I make sure that everything's touching. Mama bear amounts of glue are amounts of glue that are so thin or they're just patchy, like maybe there's just glue right in the middle of my template or right on the edges. If you use too little glue, what'll happen when you're sawing is that it's gonna start to lift on you. And I'm telling you, my friends, that is a really frustrating experience. Um, Papa bear amounts of glue is when you use way too much glue, it'll wrinkle your template. Um, and then it will also, um, take a long long time to dry so you just want a nice thin layer that covers everything and then you want to make sure that as you place it you make sure that you push it down so it adheres at this point I'm going to let all of this glue dry it usually doesn't take too long maybe 15 20 minutes and then I can go in and start sawing quick reminders the important things to remember in this step a relatively easy step is to prep your template correctly, have a good template, sand your metal well, make sure it's really, really clean so things stick down, place your templates on the metal in such a way that you maximize the use of your space and minimize the metal waste, and use the correct amount of Aileen's Tacky Glue. Take your time, do it right, it's worth it.